Just give me like 20 minutes or something like that. And uh, it's just part of it. So we want to make sure that we have everyone in the world Christ. Everyone, anyone can be a child of God. And so the plan of salvation allows me to become a child of God being adopted into the family, being saved, um, having life, and therefore eternal life. And here we have. The, the world, how this is a global uh, thing. Anyone can have God. It's not restricted. It's not uh, for a specific type of person. Anyone can have it. And of course, we base it on the scriptures. What is God's word? All right. Where are you going? Uh, this is how the plan of salvation was introduced to me. Uh, my friend asked me, where, where are you going when you pass away? Do you know? And I'm like, I really don't know. And there's heaven and there's hell. And which one which one do you think you're going to be in? And um, there's no limbo. There's no gap in between. There's not another option but hell or heaven. And so when you pass away, where do you think you'll, pass, you'll go? Whether it's hell or heaven, Think about what makes you feel that way. What have you done in your life that makes you think that way? If, if you're going to go to heaven, I'd like to introduce something to you. I'd like to share this with you. Because the truth is that hell exists. However, the reason why God made hell it was because of Satan, because of the enemy, the devil, who disobeyed God, who rebelled against him and many other angels that uh, fell and um, they will be punished at the end of time and that's why hell was created. However, to make sure that we go to heaven, there's a few things we need to do. Why is this so important? You see, there's bad news in this, in this um, video. Uh, as a whole, the plan of salvation. Romans 3, 10. That means Romans chapter 3, verse 10. Uh, in this version, the NLT, it says, As the scriptures say, no one is righteous, not even one. We have all sinned. We have all done bad stuff, whether it's lying, tricking people, doing pranks, um, wishing somebody was dead in our mind, uh, or actually committing that crime of, killing someone, uh, whether it's um, cheating, whether it's cheating on, on someone or cheating in a test, not being honest, things like that, being jealous, envying, all those things, all that stuff. Every single one of us, every human has sinned. No one is righteous. No one is perfect. No one is holy. And it says in Romans uh, 3.23 from the F ESV version, uh, for all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. This means that we have broken God's law by our actions, and therefore we are are separated from God. Our sin separates us from God. It says here, Acts 3, verse 19, NIV, it says, repent. Then, and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out Time, that time of refreshing may come from the Lord. So basically, this means that um, here we have the main two questions. Do you admit that you are a sinner? Do you admit that you have done things that separate you from God, that are not right? Because we have broken his law. We have. And here's uh, the other, the most important question that follows. If you admit that you're a sinner, because that's step number one, admitting that you're a sinner. Do you want to be forgiven? If you admit that you're a sinner and you want to be forgiven, here comes the great news. 
So uh, let me explain pictures, of course. Uh, reaching out to, to heaven, to God, we are not enough. And therefore, we, we can reach all we want, but we're not going to be enough. We're not going to reach it. And of course, here we are, sin. Sin is, is, is death. And I think I did include it here, but if not, I'll, um, I'll make sure to include it. Well, right now, I'll just explain it. That the wages, the cost of sin is death. Spiritual death. Which, what, which is why people will end up in hell because of that sin. However, with Jesus, we are safe. All right, perfect. I didn't include it. It says here, Romans 3, uh, sorry, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, the free gift, I should have, I should have capitalized that. Free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. This is, is the good news this is the good news of the gospel the gospel is the story of jesus christ this is found in the new testament of the bible the bible is a collection of books that uh people have been written wrote over time over thousands of years uh, all inspired by god so these people had experiences with god and they wrote about it and the Bible is, is the book that helps us to understand more about God, to get to know him. And it says here that the wages, the sin, the, by sinning, we pay with death. If we have sin, we are spiritually dead. And if we die with that sin, physically, we, we die, we pass away, and we still have that sin, we're, we're, we're going to hell. We're going to die. We're going to be punished because God is holy. He's perfect. And he is judge. He will judge us. At the end of time, there will be two judgments. The first one is whether you have uh, Christ or not, whether you are saved or not, heaven or hell. And then the second one is, of course, uh, giving account. What did you do in your life? What, what did you do? Very important that uh, we take that into consideration. But like I said, this is the good news. That Jesus Christ came to earth and paid for that. Paid for our sins. He paid for it. With his death. And um, like I said, this is in the New Testament. The first four books of the New Testament. The book of Matthew. The book of Luke. The book of Mark and John all talk about Jesus and the life he had here on earth. They knew him and they wrote about him. And so we, we in order to receive um, this salvation, this gift, step number one, admitting that we are a sinner, admitting and um, wanting to be forgiven, repenting, wanting to be forgiven from those sins saying sorry, being forgiven, and living differently, changing our ways to not sin anymore, turning away from that life. And then step number two is believing. Believing. And I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that. So it says here, Roman five, Romans 5, 8, but God demonstrates his own love for us in, in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is significant because although we were sinners, although we were separated from God, God found a way to for, to forgive us, to save us, to pay for our sins so we wouldn't have to because we can't. Nothing we do is enough to pay for our sins, for our actions. And that is why his love is so great. He sent Christ, his son, the son of God, to die for us. And it says here a little more about his love. John 3, 16. It's, a, it's probably the most popular verse in the whole Bible. From the NIV version, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Now, what does it mean to believe? Well, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that he is the one that God sent to earth, who was born, who lived, 
died for your sins, and resurrected three days later? Do you believe that was Jesus Christ who did that? He himself said, me and, fa and the Father are one. We are the same. Do you believe in that? If the answer is yes, I want to congratulate you because that is called faith. You have faith. You believe. You were not there. Nobody that lived in that time told you. You believe it. And that is amazing because that's the second step in having salvation. And um, that's amazing. That's amazing. Beautiful. Uh, lastly, we have um, Ephesians uh, 2 8 from the NIV version. Uh, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is a gift of God, the gift of God, the gift from God. This is free. We don't deserve it, but God wants us to have this gift. He loved the world so much. He sent his son so you wouldn't stay a sinner, so you wouldn't stay separated from him. Jesus came down from heaven to earth, became human, being God. He became human. He lived the perfect life. He told everybody about the good news of God's kingdom. He died on the cross for your sins, pain in full for you. You no longer belong to sin. You belong to God. You belong to almighty Jesus, who is God. And then three days later, he resurrected. He is alive. He is in heaven, preparing a place for those that have received him, for those that accept him. And this is a gift God wants everyone to have. Everyone. It's a choice that he has given us. That it's free. We don't deserve it, but he wants us to have it. So, would you like to accept Christ? If the answer is yes, let me just explain a little. It says in Romans 5.12, the NLT version, it says, when Adam sinned, this is the man, the first human uh, in, mentioned in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, Old Testament, says that when he sinned, sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So death spread to everyone, for everyone sin. This is very important because through one man, sin entered the world. But through another, Christ, sin was overcome. It was destroyed. It was broken. The chain was broken. And we are set free in Christ. John 4, 16, NIV version. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. We need Jesus. We need Christ in our life. It says here, John 1, uh, 7, uh, 12, oops, sorry, John, 4, John 1, 12, NIV. Yet to all who did receive him, Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That means God adopts you into his family. He becomes your father. Even if you are an orphan, even if you are rejected, even if you've been abandoned, betrayed, lied to, forsaken by the world, you still have God. He is your father. Jesus is your brother. You have this entire family on earth, all over the world, all, all over the globe, that is your family in faith, in Christ. It's a beautiful thing because you're never alone. And we are so thankful for that, that we become children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the most powerful God that could ever exist, the one that created the universe, the one that created this planet that we're on, the one that created you, God Almighty, wants to be part of your world. He wants to be part of your life. He wants to have a relationship with you. 
as your father, as your friend, as your savior and Lord. Lastly, we have Second Peter 3, 9, NIV. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. This means that God is not slow in keeping his word. If he promised you something, if he promised you eternal life, living forever through Christ, then trust in his promises. He will keep his promise. He promised that a, a, a Savior would be born, that a Messiah would be given to this people. And then Jesus Christ was born. He promised that he would find a way, that he would make a way for people to be not separated from him anymore. And that way is Jesus. He is the truth. He is the life. And if you believe and you want to accept him, you want to be forgiven, then I invite you to make that choice in your heart. You make that choice. Because God doesn't want anyone to suffer. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He doesn't want to make anyone go into eternal punishment. He doesn't want to punish anyone. That's not why Jesus came into the world. Not to punish anyone, but to save everyone. He came the he came to the world to save us, to help us be saved and free from sin. That's why God is so patient. That's why he's been patient with us all this time. Because he wants everyone to repent, to be forgiven, to be saved. He loves you so much. So thank you, God, because you have made this, this day. And... Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity of, of sharing this with others, Lord. And I just, I just hope that these people here, they, they understand what, what, what we're saying, Lord. May they have the Holy Spirit to help them. May they have Christ, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. All right. If you would like to accept Christ, and you do in your heart, and you believe, and you have repented, you want to be forgiven, you want to live a better life, you want to live for Jesus Christ. Because that's all it takes. Repenting. Wanting to be forgiven. You know you're a sinner. You admit it. You want to be forgiven. You want to live differently. You don't want to be that old uh, person anymore. That old life gone. That's the first step. Second. Believing. Mm -hmm. Believing in Jesus. That he is the son of God. That he is God. That he died for your sins. That he paid in full for you, so you could be free, so you could have a relationship with God, so you could be saved and go to heaven. And later, three days later, resurrected, came back to life. If you believe that he did that, and you accept him in your heart, I congratulate you on this beautiful decision. Once you have salvation, no one can take it away. You are saved. No one can take it away because you have accepted Christ. Congratulations and welcome to the family of God. All right. The answer is yes, right? It says here, Romans 10, verse 9 through 10, NIV. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. That means that you, you, you tell people, Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord. That means he's in control. He is the one you will live for. You believe it in your heart because God doesn't force us. We make the choice of believing, of repenting, and a accepting but if you believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead that he that jesus is lord you will be saved because it is with our heart that we believe and are justified we are made right in christ we are made holy and perfect in christ 
and with our mouths we profess our faith. All right? You already accepted Christ? You're saved. You're good. But let us let us pray. This is a little prayer that um, you can pray right now. Right now, right now. Just to thank God. Just just to set it confirm official. Just just to pray. You're already saved and you be repented, believed, and accepted. You're good. You're saved. So let's let's just pray. Just just a little prayer. It says Lord, Lord God, Lord Jesus, for too long I have kept you out of my life. I know that I am a sinner and that I cannot save myself. No longer will I close the door when I hear you knocking. By faith, I greatly received my, your gift of salvation. I am ready to trust you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming to earth. I believe you are the Son of God who died on the cross for my sins and rose from the dead on the third day. Thank you for bearing my sins and giving me the gift of eternal life. I believe your words are true. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my Savior. Amen. All right. So we know we're a sinner. We cannot, we are not enough. We cannot save ourselves. We will no longer ignore Jesus. By faith, we receive this gift. We are ready to trust him as Lord, that he is in control, that we live for him, and as Savior, that he paid for us, that he is the one that rescued us, that paid for our life, for our sins to be forgiven, for us to be free from the enemy's hold. We are free from sin. We now belong to God. Thank you because he came to earth. We believe that he is the son of God, that he died for our sins, that he rose from the dead on the third day. Thank you because he took our sins and gave his life so they could be forgiven, so they could be paid for. Therefore, giving us this gift of living forever. We believe that his words are true. And we invite him to put it to live in us, to come to our hearts and be our Savior and our Lord. And of course, amen. And um, I learned this in the when we were talking about Mary uh, uh, a bit ago uh, during my, my learning of, of the Bible. Amen means uh, may it be like like you say. May it be like as as it has been said, as have as you have explained, así sea. May it be that way. Sorry, I included some Spanish in there. <laughs> all right, some advice, wonderful advice for all those that are saved. That you just received Christ, you just accepted Him right now. Get a Bible. There's a lot of versions out there you can um depending on what year it is there's different uh, verses versions sorry king james um whatever language you you are good at whatever language you feel comfortable most mostly um whatever is easiest for you to to understand and read and you enjoy it and you know you're not going to struggle a lot get that language right you need a bible the bible is the book to, know, to get to know God. We learn more about him. We learn about his stories, his promises, what he has told us, especially Jesus, because, you know, so much has changed. We have so many rules back in the Old Testament. And they had to sacrifice animals. But now, after Jesus uh, brought something different in the, old, in the New Testament, he became that sacrifice. We no longer have to uh, sacrifice animals to be forgiven. We can go directly to God and ask for forgiveness. And we can ask him for help to not sin anymore. To help us resist temptation and the enemy and every sin that we uh, are we face. So it's very important that we get a Bible, especially uh, spending time in the Bible. Getting to know God, getting to know his word, getting to know uh, the stories, the lessons he wants to teach us through the Bible. And, uh, of course, there's different versions uh, depending on, uh, you know, there's like King James that kind of reminds me of Shakespeare and that's kind of um, old English or old-ish 
uh, terms. It's, it's just a little weird. Uh, but if, if you're familiar with that, you're comfortable with that, go for it. Whatever version works, there's so many. And um, each uh, are, they like, they might be easier for you. The words are just a little different. Um, some explain more. There's so many Bibles out there uh, for, for kids, for adults, for everyone. And of course, find a church, especially one that teaches about Christ, that teaches the Bible, that teaches about Jesus, a biblical church, a Christian church. And by Christian, that means we have Christ. We have that relationship with God. Christ is in us. And by finding a church, you'll be surrounded by other people that are also safe that they also have christ they'll have experience maybe they've been walking with christ longer they'll help you grow in christ so trust him trust him ask ask him give me a church what church should i go to lord guide me i i need you i need your help okay he knows what's best for you he he loves you so much and all you need to do is ask talk to Finding a church is very important. You, you get into the habit of, of spending time in the world. You get to know other people that know Christ, that uh, have Christ. Uh, you get opportunities for a small group, Bible groups, uh, worship, learning songs about, about God. You have so many opportunities in a church to grow in Christ. I really encourage it. That's actually how I got to Christ. I went to a church, a Christian church, and um, I fell in love since the first day. They were so nice to me. And um, like six months later, um, my friend, she shared the plan of salvation with me. I was Catholic. I thought I was Christian. I thought I was saved. I was good, part of the church. Turns out I didn't even have Christ. <laughs> but if it wasn't for her, I don't know how long I would be without Christ. But the moment she, she explained all this and I accepted and we prayed, I knew. I knew I was going to heaven. I knew I had Christ. I knew, and it made sense, that God had planned this all along. He had chosen me to become part of his family. And that's why I encourage you to trust him. He knows. But um, it's not going to be easy to hear him. I myself struggle to hear him. That's why I need to be more in the word. Because if you spend time in his word, You'll learn to recognize his voice in a way, what he's trying to tell you. And of course, we have the Holy Spirit to understand the Bible. more. So as soon as you accept Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you and helps you understand, helps you on. Um, it teaches, he, sorry, he teaches you things in the Bible. He guides you. He speaks um, for Oh, he, he's God himself as well. They're all God altogether. So very important that uh, you pray. Very important. Praying is super important. Praying means talking to God. There are, um, there's different religions. And some pray where they just uh, say like a phrase or, or they read the whole verse, paragraph thing. However, Praying as a Christian means talking to God. Christ paid for us to have that relationship with God. Just like when you talk to a friend, just when you talk to your to a family member, to your parents. That's the relationship God wants to have with us. One where you can thank him and you can ask for help and you can uh, share stuff with him. Um, where you trust him. An example would be, uh, God, thank you for today. Uh, I... I uh, I want to ask you for, for this and that. Help me, please. What do I do? You know what to do. Tell me. Reveal it to me. Uh, in Jesus' name, amen. And this is very important because we thank God first. There's so many things to be thankful for. And if you don't know what to thank him for, make a list. Three things you are grateful for. Every morning, as, as soon as you start your day, try to get in that, in that mindset of, being thankful, especially because you have a new day. You woke up. You can see. You can breathe. You're not in pain. 
whatever it may be. Be thankful. Thank God. And the more you have him in your mind, the more you are in God, in Christ, in his word, the more you'll see him working in your life, the more you will see his blessing. Secondly, ask. Whatever it may be, whether it's a car, a job, a, a partner, whether you're looking for love or you're looking for a school or you want advice for your, because you're a parent or because you're about to get fired, whatever it may be, what to eat, what to do, ask him. Do not be afraid. Anything you could think of is small. Your, your requests are small compared to God's power. Nothing is impossible for him. Let him do the impossible. Let him do the supernatural. He will do the hard work. He will do it for you. But you need to ask. You need to go to him. You need to talk to him and ask. Make requests. Bring it up to him. Give it to him. Trust in him. He knows you. He knows your heart. He knows your intention. But he wants you to talk to him. He wants to hear you. He wants your trust. He wants your heart. This is a relationship that works on trust. If you ask, if you pray, if you talk to him and ask, he'll give it to you. He wants what's best for you. Okay, you got to trust. You got to you got to go to him. If you're worried about something, you're scared, you're, you're nervous, give it to him. Give it all to him. Our Father, our God is so amazing. He is almighty. He does not even sleep. He doesn't eat. He is always listening to you. So ask. He can do anything. You have that faith to believe that Christ died for you. Have the faith that God is almighty, that he can do everything. He, he can do anything. That he is so powerful. He was able to save your life from death. You will not be punished. You will be, you are saved. You will go to heaven. You will not be punished eternally. You will live forever in heaven with him. So very important. When it does come to the judgment, you've already passed the first judgment. You are saved. If you receive Christ, you are saved. You, are, you, you already passed the first judgment. Now the second one, why should you go to heaven when you give account? Why should he let you go in heaven? Not because you're a good person. Not because you went to church. Not because you helped. None of that saves you. Remember what saves you? Christ. Christ saves you. We deserve to go to heaven, not because of anything we did, but because of God's grace, because we believed in Christ, because we have him in our heart, because he is our Lord and our Savior. All right. Moving on, Jesus' name. Why is it important? Because we ask in his name. God doesn't see us anymore when he looks at us. He sees Jesus. If you accept to Christ, if you have him in your heart, the Lord and Savior, you want to follow him. You want to live your life. You've given up your life to him. He sees Christ. He sees his son. God sees the perfect sacrifice. He sees Jesus. We are clean. We are forgiven. We are saved. He sees Jesus' blood in us. He sees Jesus' perfect heart. In us, we are cleaned, we are forgiven. However, that doesn't mean we're going to sin like there's no tomorrow. We're going to live the best we can, trying to be the most like Christ. Because we are followers of him now. We want to live like him. We've given up his, our life to him, to, for him to live his life through us. Amen. All right, what if you're already part of God's family? What if you've already been saved and you're watching this video? Welcome. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. If you're already saved, if you already received Christ, Christian, whatever you want to call yourself, it says Colossians uh, 6, 
sorry, Colossians 1, 6, NIV, uh, that has come to you in the same way. The gospel is bearing fruit and growing throughout the whole world, just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and truly understood God's grace. If that's you, if you already have Christ in your life, if you, then I don't know how long, you understood it. You heard God's word. You understood his grace. I want to give you the same advice. Make sure you have a Bible. Make sure you uh, go to church. You, you have a church. It will help you grow. But most importantly, pray. Talk to God wherever it may be. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be long. Just talk to God. It doesn't have to be once a day. Talk to him as much as you can. It doesn't have to be out loud. You can do it in your head. You can think about it. You can write it down. Whatever helps. Be with God. And of course, share Christ with others. Tell others about what God has done in your life. Share your faith. Romans is a wonderful book that includes the gospel, the message, the good news. It, it explains a few things, and I used a lot of the, of the verses from that book. But it also mentions, of course, that we are to confess, claim, proclaim that Jesus is Lord. We have to use our mouths. We have to tell others. We can't keep salvation to ourselves. No, no, no. We have to share it. We have to tell everyone. Don't be shy. Tell people. Tell people what God has done in your life. Tell about them. Tell about Jesus. We need to tell the world. We need to tell everyone so that everyone may be saved. All right? We all have that duty of living what Christ did. He shared about God. He shared about the kingdom. He shared so much with people, encouraging them to be the salt of the world, of making people uh, thirst for God's word. Be the salt in this world. Help people heal. Share Christ with them. Help people know God. Help people guide them to the word, to the Bible. Just share. And a way to do that is being baptized. Bapti being baptized doesn't save you. But it's something that Jesus wants us to do. Because it represents his death and the resurrection. Because um, you are submerged underwater and then lifted up. It represents Jesus' death. When you go down, you are, you are submerged in water. Your whole body is under the water. And then you come out, out of the water. You are cleaned. You have been resurrected. You are no longer spiritually dead. It represents his resurrection, Jesus' resurrection. And of course, you are now a new person because you are saved. Being baptized is a way to testify about your faith, to be obedient. And of course, Jesus did the same. He, he got baptized, although he didn't need, need it. John told him himself, John the Baptist was like, what's going on? I'm supposed to be baptized by you. Why are you coming to me to get baptized? And Jesus just said, just, just go with it. You know, it's, it's this needs to happen. And so Jesus got baptized. He was an example. He is the example. And that is why we are followers. That's why we are Christians. Because Christ is our Lord and Savior. And he is the example that we have to follow. We have his example to follow, and of course, he is living through us. All right, last slide, I promise. Remember, God's promises are eternal, right? They are forever. So just a final few things to strengthen yourself in the Lord. Of course, John, 1st of John 5, 12, all the way to 14, NIV. He who has the Son, as we know, that's Jesus Christ, has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. That is why we have to share Christ so others can have the Son as well and therefore eternal life. 
says, number 13, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the God, of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life, believing in his name. You have eternal life. 14, this is the confidence we have in approaching God, that we ask anything according to his will. He hears us. Anything that is according to his will. And that is why it's important to pray for the salvation of others. Because it is according to his will. He wants people to be saved. He wants everyone to go to heaven. Everyone. He wants heaven to be filled with everyone. And that is why we have to share. All right. It's very important that we understand that God wants the best for us. He is capable of doing the impossible, the supernatural. But if we ask according to his will, according to what he has planned, it is very likely to be happening to happen. He, he is always listening. He cares about every single little thing about you, about what you do, about your life. But if you pray according to his will, you are, you know, <laughs> he is totally hearing. But of course, he loves us so much. He hears us all the time. He's he's He always has time for you, all right? Just, just got to make sure that you're praying and praying and praying and praying. It's very important that you talk to God and you share time with him. You give him that time. Of course, um, God, that includes the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which is uh, the Father who sent the Son, Jesus, to earth. And when Jesus uh, resurrected on the third day after dying, he had to, uh, you know, he spent some time on earth uh, with some people, so people would see him and get to know him. You know, he had his own agenda going on, according to God. And so when it was time to go back to heaven to prepare the place for those that uh, had received him, that believed in him, that were saved, he promised that he would send a helper. And that is the Holy Spirit, which helps us. Um, understand God's word that he is trying to tell us the Holy Spirit guides us the Holy Spirit is a person himself in the three in one uh, combination that we have here the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit are all God three people in one they are all God three persons in God are one all right so three three people one God Right? You have eternal life. You will live forever because you have Jesus Christ. All right? So you are now, you have this armor of, of God to protect you from the enemy, to fight sin so you uh, don't fall into temptation. All right? So you have this helmet of salvation. This is an actual thing. It's in the Bible. All right? Because when God sees us, he doesn't see us. He sees Jesus. He sees his son. We are forgiven and we are free. However, know that this life, it, it's, it's, we are not Jesus. We're not Christ. We have him in our heart. We, we have him in us. He lives through us if we allow him to. But we're not, we're, we're human. Okay? We're not perfect. We you know, Jesus did all this because we we make mistakes, all right? We are flawed. We are not perfect. So there will be mistakes, right? We will mess up. We'll, we'll not give God the time that he deserves. Uh, we will forget that, um, that he blessed us today. We will forget to pray. We will forget to uh, not think a certain way, to not lie, to not, uh, you know, uh, do all that stuff. That is against his his um his law. We we will we will not you know be the best. We will not be perfect, especially right away. However, know that God is ready to forgive you. When you receive Christ, He forgave the sins you had in your past, in your present, and in the future. You are forgiven. I do encourage you to talk to Him though. If you mess up, if you uh, fall to sin, whatever it may be, talk to him. 
ask him for forgiveness. Let him know, hey, I, I'm, I'm sorry I did this, Lord. Um, I, I know that I messed up. Please help me with this. I need your help. I, I don't want to live like this anymore. I want to live more like Christ. Make me more like Christ. Help me, Lord, so I can be stronger in you. Help me. I need you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's very important that we talk to God, that we pray. You can talk to the Father. You can talk to the Son. You can talk to the Holy Spirit, whoever you want to address, or God in general, Lord, King, Friend, Judge. There's so many names that God has. He has so many things. He is our everything. We need nothing else. All right? And you need nothing else but the Bible to know God's word, to get to know him. So very important that um, when you find a church, it's a church that teaches the Bible. So very, um, be very uh, careful about what church you go to. And of course, you know, we have all these people here um, that uh, will help you. The church, remember, it's not the building. It's the people in the building. That's the church, especially the church of Christ is those people uh, are part of a Christian church because um, that, that is what um, we are called. We are the body of Christ. Through us, he does his works. Through us, he works in other people's lives. He lives his life through us. He is the head. We are the body. And just like there's different limbs, uh, hands, fingers, feet, ears, you know, we are all different. We all work different. We, we all do different things, but we are all united. We are all one in God, in Christ, in faith. So brothers and sisters, if you have um, received Christ, you are now my brothers and sisters in Christ, in faith. And I we just want to congratulate you. It's, it's official. If you have Christ, if you have made that choice, for every sinner that repents, that turns away from sin, that believes and accepts, there's a party in heaven. The angels celebrate and rejoice. Thank you so much for your time. I'm sure this was more than 20 minutes, but thank you so much for your time. Um, and just, just thank you because um, this is very important. I've been wanting to do this video and, um, you know, just spreading the word. And actually going through verses so you can understand it. I just really hope this helps and that um, you grow in Christ. Let me know if uh, you have any questions, anything that you have concerns about, or um, if you need help to uh, get to know more about Jesus. Uh, there's there's some channels that I know of that um, I could recommend, whether it's uh, songs, whether it's verses that you want to learn about, or um, just in general topics. Christian topics that can help you uh, live a better life in Christ. Let me know and um, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much and um, may God bless you. Thank you so much for being here and, and don't forget Jesus is Lord and Savior so trust in him. He's got your back and um, have a blessed day. Oh, if you do have a Bible, if you do get a Bible, write this day down if you have a bible and you were saved you received christ write the day you did so write it down because it's it's, it's important all right just just it's important so that way you know when you your walk started you know it's, it's going to be awesome that way you can see the difference you know a year from now you know it's it's very important so if you do that for me please uh, write down the date you can write the time if you want it's okay but um yeah, thank you so much. And um, if you enjoyed this video, if you uh, learned something from it, if you accepted Christ because of this video, please share it. Wherever it may be, whatever social media, uh, whatever uh, you know, uh, app, whatever it may be, if this helped you, if you think that somebody needs this, please share. Please share this video. And uh, with that said, thank you so much again. God bless you all. And um, in Jesus' name, I pray that um, you you find um, peace and God in everything. Amen.